are you, Jerome? I am great. <laughs> I wish I could have saw the push-ups. <laughs> yeah, but I bus walks right by me, and you you thought I was an accountant. Yeah, you had the you had the glasses, you had the stone look, and you had the the hair going. I was like, who is this guy? You know, I mean, you you've got some very smart people going Notre Dame, so I'm figuring, oh, this, this must be an accountant or something. This guy is DP of all people. I blended right in with all those smart people at Notre Dame, didn't I? Right, you blended right in. You worked it with the glasses. That was that was a smart move. I like when you put on the Hall of Fame jacket. The reaction you get, so. Uh, uh, Jonathan Vilma, former uh, uh, NFL player, Heinz Ward. As soon as you put on that jacket, bus, their reaction is completely different. Absolutely, they, you know they get touchy feely. They want to, they want to touch it. <laughs> they, they just, they, they appreciate it, and they, I think, I think it's more they appreciate what it stands for. Uh, you know, much more than me. You know, they see me all the time, but to uh, to see the jacket is it's uh, it's something, especially having played the game of football. You, you can appreciate what it what it means. Okay, where do you keep the jacket at home? <laughs> I keep it. I keep it in my closet. The problem is I haven't put it in the actual closet yet. So it's still it's it's just still sitting there. It's like the one with the one garment that just won't go inside the actual closet. I just can't bring myself to put it in yet. If I said you could have an Augusta jacket, a Masters jacket, or the Hall of Fame jacket. Wow. Uh I, I would still say the the Hall of Fame jacket because I'm not a golfer, so it doesn't mean as much. No, let's say you won one. Let's say you won the Masters, or you got a Hall of Fame jacket. Oh wow! I, I would. I mean, whew, that's something there. <laughs> you know, here's here's what I would say. I would say the Masters jacket, and the reason I say that is because uh, if my information serves me correctly, the 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 gold jackets were kind of modeled after the. Uh, master jackets. Nice. So with that being said, I would have to go with the originator. But if you don't have that emblem, the Hall of Fame or the Master's jacket, those are just tacky looking jackets, right? The ugly, the ugliest <laughs> things you ever would want to wear. <laughs> you, you'd be la- you'd be the laughing stock of all your friends if you came out with a, uh, a ugly gold jacket on. People are like, who do you think you are? Uh, we're talking to Jerome Bettis, the uh, Steelers Hall of Famer, former Notre Dame player, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I didn't know that USC also recruited you. You said Michigan, Notre Dame, and USC, that's what it came down to? That's what it came down to. Those were the, the three official visits that I took uh, coming out of high school. And, and you, it was, it was said, you said USC was not going to pay you that much. And no, that, I was just joking with you. Oh, you were joking. With, oh. I was joking. Oh. <laughs> How close <laughs> was going to you? Because they were that was tailback you, so you had a chance to go. They were going to make you a tailback or a fullback? They were going to make me a fullback, oh. but they wanted they wanted to to run me, and they had a fullback who had just went who was a uh, who had just went to the NFL named Leroy Holt, uh, and they said, hey, you know, he was a fullback. He went you know went to the NFL. He was a high draft pick. I mean, you can we can still highlight you, and so that was interesting, uh, as it turns out. But uh, I just couldn't couldn't bring myself to go that far away from home. Uh, you watched the Patriots Colts last night? I did. I did. I watched quite a bit of it. Okay. Explain the punt form. Whatever the, the, the Colts were trying to do, Bus. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'll tell you this. It was, it was idiotic. And, and here's the problem. It was, you've got to go and say it's poor coaching. Okay? Because now, hear me out. You, you put these guys in this position. And now they're unsure of whether to... to, to Hike it or not, there's no way that you hike it. So you have to tell whoever is is the center all of the situations in which you would hike the ball, none of which would be with two guys over top of you and and the quarterback. So I just stood there and said, you've got to be kidding me. You're giving the New England Patriots free points, an opportunity to score points because – of stupidity, and it just was. It was sad to see because the Colts actually played a pretty good football game up until that point. But I would think you would say you will not hike that ball no matter what 
unless that happens. But then, yeah. even then, if you're trying to get him offsides or trying to get him with 12 men on the field, you're not snapping the ball no matter what. And that's where you take a delay of game, but you still have a great punter in McAfee, so you're okay there. But the momentum went out of the building after that. It, you know, it went out of the building because every fan in there was like, are we cheering for idiots? What's going on? <laughs> they, they really couldn't believe it. Like, are we that dumb? Are we that dumb that we're going to do something? Like, and the, the worst part of all, every player that was on the right side was not on the football. I know. It was like, first of all, if you're going to do a trick play like that, at least let it be I mean, a, a play that can possibly work. This play had no chance of working. Even if you did catch him off sides, you're going to get a penalty. So it, it just doesn't make sense. It was just the dumbest thing you ever want to see. And that's when the coaches hurt the players. You know, the last thing you ever want to do as a coach is really put your players in a position not to succeed. And that's what they did out there because those guys were fighting their hearts out in a tough game that they at home that they wanted to win. And you took the you took the air right out of all the footballs. Uh, hint, hint. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> oh boy! And and that's basically what happened. And that's it, it was a shame. You ever lost a game anywhere close to how Michigan lost against Michigan State? Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, wow, that was tough. That was tough. We we lost the overtime game. Uh, where I felt as though I should have been in the game. We were playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. It was in the overtime, and we needed to just, you know, pound the football, get a couple more yards, and we uh, we win the game. Well, they decided not to put me in, and, and the uh, quarterback hikes the ball, and he fumbles it in the quarterback running back exchange. They pick it up go for a touchdown, win the game, game's over, and I was livid at that point. You're over it now, though. I, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still talking about it. So I don't think I'll ever be over that one. It's like, hey, guys, uh, mm. what do you think I'm here for? All right. Uh, should the Steelers stay with Landry Jones? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no question about it. Even if Vic it. is cleared to play? Well, the problem is, here's the problem. Vic hasn't taken to the offense, okay? So he's got to be comfortable in the offense. And, and so you can't, you can't do a, a disservice to him by putting him out there. He's not comfortable, okay? He's not able to see the field clearly. And all of a sudden now you're losing football games and now you're blaming Michael Vick. Well, you've got a guy who's been here a couple years, he knows the system. Yes, he 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 may cost you a turnover or two here there, but th- you know that's part of, of football. So I think you've got to go with Landry Jones. Give him an opportunity to go out there and play his way off of the football field, and then you know what you have in Michael Vick. Okay, you know he's going to be the game manager. He can he can run. Uh, you know he can get you some first downs. He can kind of move the the, the chains. But if you want a guy who can really kind of run the offense, you've got to go with Andrew Jones. It was great to see you on Saturday night, Bussy. It was great to see the the old accountant. It was great to see you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> where is that jacket, Hall of Fame jacket right now? I, I'm actually looking at it. I'm, I'm in uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you worn it to bed before? <laughs> I have not worn it to bed. I have not. I, I will say this. I have looked at it in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but I have not worn it too bad. <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't want to get too deep into that conversation. So. <laughs> uh, hey, good to talk to you, Bussy. Thank Thanks you. for joining Appreciate us. It. No problem. All right. Jerome Bettis, Steelers Hall of Fame running back. In fact, I have his L.A. Rams jersey that's over on the wall there. If... Uh, our cameraman, Wild Bill, can go over there and get that. You got the L.A. Rams jersey. And, and that's when I, I first met him, uh, and I, his agent said, hey, you know, do you want a jersey, a bus? I said, yeah, his Rams jersey. I was like, L.A. Rams jersey? I said, yes, I want that. So we got the uh, bus L.A. Rams jersey. 